Good morning and welcome to day three of the straw bale tool shed build. Today it's all about the box beam. A box beam is made out of wood and will be placed on top of the bales and will add additional support to the walls and will be secured to the wall as well as the foundation via the webbing that we installed in the previous episode. A box beam can be made in several different ways. It can be as simple as a piece of plywood sitting on top of the bale or as complex as a, a wooden I-beam made with dados and all kinds of fancy joinery. What we're going to be doing is using two two by sixes running parallel with a piece of half inch OSB nailed on top. That is sort of a medium, considered a medium rigid uh, box beam and for our build will be more than sufficient in terms of strength and is very cost effective as well. So let's get over and start cutting some wood. So I went to the lumber yard yesterday and picked up two by sixes in a variety of lengths. I have uh, 10 footers and 12 footers. I have two sheets of half inch OSB and I really don't like working with OSB but for this purpose it really is very cost effective. That was less than $10 for a sheet whereas the equivalent in a uh, plywood would have probably been around 20 bucks a sheet. So what I'm going to do is measure out the width of the bales. It should be about 14 inches. And then I'll be able to rip a sheet of plywood down, or I should say OSB down, into 14-inch strips and connect them using the 2x6 planks.
These clamps uh, run about 14 bucks a pair, which I'll tell you sounds kind of expensive, but they really hold this uh, this track in place, and it gives you absolutely perfectly straight cuts when you uh, set it up properly. So the clamps, if you're going to buy the AccuCut from Craig, it's really advisable. Just spend another 15 bucks, get this, get these uh, clamps and you won't have to worry about the track walking on you. Even though it's not supposed to because the track has rubber on the bottom, but still when it gets full of sawdust, it might have a tendency to walk. So, you know, pop for the extra 15 bucks. Get the clamps. So here you can see what a nice straight cut this thing makes. Now when you buy the AccuCut, you get the, the uh, starting or landing, landing gear, which is this plastic piece on the end, and you get two tracks. Or you can buy what's called the AccuCut XL, which is what I got because I knew I was gonna be using it to cut down sheet goods, four by eight sheet goods, and the extra two tracks, as you can see, gives you the length you need to get this done. If you buy two tracks, you're good for cross-cutting on 4x8 sheets, and that's about it. So it's really worth the extra money. It's either that or get a table saw, and I don't have a table saw. So this was going to be the next best uh, option for me. And you can see it's just absolutely a factory straight cut. Another nice thing about the AccuCut track is you can use it with a regular uh, cordless saw, as I'm using here, just as a straight edge. I'm using it in the cross-cut fashion. I believe I did actually clamp the track down, although for such, for such a uh, cut, it's really not necessary. But it works great. Here you can see I'm uh, assembling the first box beam, laying out the 2x6s and the half inch OSB on top of it, just squaring things off and screwing it down with some exterior grade construction screws. Pretty simple process. Here's the first box beam finished. Let me show you what it looks like on the other side. One thing I can tell you, it's heavy. It's pretty simple, but it's gonna be effective. Okay, one down, three to go. So here's the first box beam, just kind of placed where it's gonna go permanently. I just wanted to give you an idea of what this looks like. So again, it's designed to sit on the entire width of the bale, and in this case, it's spanning the doorway. So it's connecting these two half walls, and once the box beams are in place, I'll be framing in a doorway just by putting two verticals on either side and then the gaps will be filled with uh, stuffed straw and uh, and clay. The top plates have been fabricated and I'm going to take a quick break here for some lunch. Again, making that same mistake that I made the other day, but I'm hungry. 
the plates are just sitting up here and what we'll do is when we get back we'll take the straps that we installed the other day bring them up and over the top plate and we'll cinch them together and we'll do it slowly we'll alternate corners we'll do it like we're tightening lug nuts on a tire or on a wheel uh, so that we can then bring the bales and the walls down to the same level and then once they're at the same level I'm going to attach the corners of the top plates Now that all the webbing has been fed through the baling twine, I'm going to get started with the buckling process. So with that, we'll just use this tool here and the buckles. Now you saw us using the same process for splitting the bales. It is no different except the fact that I'm not going to cut the webbing. I'm going to tighten it down slowly and work my way around the tool shed so that it compresses evenly. going to start by doing it hand tight all the way around. shorter than I'd like it to be but what we're gonna do is next time around I'm gonna let this compress and next time around I'll strap it from the top
So I've gone around the first series of strapping and what I did was every lower strap got pulled tight. So they're pretty tight, but they're going to compress over time. So we're gonna save the ratcheting of the top strap for another day. We're gonna give this a chance to settle. And the way I know that is the first ones that I've uh, ratcheted down, which I thought were pretty tight, aren't quite as tight. They're not playing that tune yet. So I'm gonna save the rest of that for another day. What I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna go along here now and I'm gonna pin my top plates together on the, on the, uh, on the joints here and here so that it creates a level top plate all the way around. Sometimes you gotta think on your feet. The only way I could get these two plates to closely meet up was to grab an old bench vise, but it worked. That brings this episode to an end. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. In the next episode, we'll begin with the exterior trimming around the box beams as well as the roof. So we'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned.